Have you had any kind of weird emails through before that you're like, Jesus? I got a guy Christ. send me a demo that was basically what my, I did a track called Video Signing, and <laughs> the guy basically took the track Video Signing and sent it to me back <laughs> with his name on it. <laughs> you're joking? I was like, I just said, is this a joke? And he says, No, I hope you like my demo. So here we go, welcome along, this is the Escapade show number 32 and we're joined with Glasgow Techno Heavyweight, <laughs> Gary Beck. Welcome None other on. than. Hi. <laughs> yes, Gary. <laughs> yes. Pleasant to have you along, mate. Much it's appreciated. very nice to be here. Good work you guys are doing, so. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Thanks great. Thanks so much. Um, been g- g- getting some great chats before we, we went we went on here as well. And Aye. We've been trying to get you on for a while, and yeah. it's been back and forth, and I will definitely make it happen, and, and all that. And it's taken a while. Aye. And uh, like the ones we've done with, like Harvey McKay and David Aye. Forbes and all that, your name comes, constantly comes up. That's nice. It's like, get Gary on. You know? <laughs> uh, so it's a pleasure. Uh, it's, it's good to be here. Pleasure. I found it okay in the end. So yeah. Aye. No one finds a place easy. We <laughs> like it that way. Intentionally that way. <laughs> it's funny you were saying you thought maybe graffiti would be outside. Well, like, now nah, we decided to do the inside wall. You know? I know. There was, there was nothing. Nothing there. Just just very secretive and mm-hmm. all that. And then you come in and it's like mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah, I yeah. think that adds to the effect, doesn't it? It's like you don't know what you're coming into, you know. <laughs> but no, we do really appreciate having you on. So how have things been, man? Because you seem uh, crazy busy at the moment. Loads happening. Yeah, th- things are still going really well. It's like 10 years I've been doing this. Uh, wow. And it's still still good. Mm-hmm. Um, I, last week I was in Australia. A couple of days ago, Barcelona there. And then I've got, yeah, I'm away this weekend as well. So I'm just happy that it's, it's still going. <clears throat> People are enjoying the music and... Um, I'm still enjoying it mm-hmm. I mean that's the main thing so um, 10 years you say 10 years is that the length of the label or have you been building before ten, then like? I would say 10 years 10 11 years I've been doing it in a professional right. sense so but I had to kind switch. of give up my, my job sort mm-hmm. of thing to, to, to do Excellent. this full time so yeah I mean obviously I was doing it <laughs> it's part part time before yeah, yeah. that you know just, just uh, finishing work and then just like hammering my, my little studio and just, just working away trying to make something not even really trying to make something happen just for the love of doing it mm-hmm. I just all I could think about was finishing work and making tunes mm-hmm. you know that's just all I wanted to do and obviously the things that followed after that I was like oh wow <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good hobby to have do you know what I mean it's it got really to be is. treated as a hobby you know because mm-hmm. um, I think a lot of people like they will they'll, they'll not they they want to have a hobby, but then they'll they'll just sit and watch a telly or whatever, and then Aye. it's kind of like you know you should maybe try and work towards something <coughs> no matter what it is. So when when it started, what were you? Did you go in making techno or no? No, I was making all sorts of weird things. Really, I'd love to hear some of that. I stuff. I was going through some of them uh, the other day, like things from like two thousand and three four. I thought that's so badly produced <laughs> that's awful but there was quite good ideas in there mm-hmm. um, so I was just doing absolutely everything and then uh, yeah I just started going more and more to, to the arches mm-hmm. subby and I thought oh, you know, I love this I could I want to put my own kind of stamp on this mm-hmm. and, and I just started making a lot more same same as now techno we be bits, bits of house in it and stuff like that <clears> and vocals and stuff um, so yeah I really just started pushing with that sound sent away brown envelopes, sent away the demos, you know, no no wee transfers and all that, you know, I just yeah, sent yeah. away the envelopes and uh, <laughs> eventually I got I got a little bit of success. Um, I think it was 2005, uh, a label in Philadelphia called Worship Recordings. They were like a dub reggae kind of label. Nice. Aye, but it was actually my friend Andy Graham who, who produces under the name CIA. CIA. He's, he lives in London now. Um but he was doing some stuff and I thought, I'm going to send some stuff along just to, you know, and, and they signed it and I got my first vinyl release 2005. That got, you know, got the real buzz going, started mm. writing more and more and more. What and then, ah, it was a good, great yeah. to see just getting your vinyl yeah, I mean, through wow. the door. It was amazing, you know. An American label as well, must have felt pure Hollywood. Man. Ah, it was great. I mean, I just thought, <laughs> oh, you know, that's all I could think about. And I thought, wow, man, I've got my own vinyl here. It's, it's amazing. And then it, obviously the big one came when, when Richie got in touch. Um, and he fo- he just phoned me. I was in a shop and he phoned me and he was like, "Hey, hey guy, it's Richie Hunt and you." I was like, "What?" <laughs> you know. And yeah, he wanted to sign a track. And then after that, it kind of mm-hmm. kind of blew up. Wow. You know. So. I don't even remember sending him a, a demo. Right. I, I was sending out a lot at the time. 
just as I say, the brown envelopes, sending them out. And, um, but I don't specifically remember sending a demo to Richie. I might have, but, but anyway, I always put my number in, in it in the demos. Right, you know, there we go. A wee, a wee note saying, please. <laughs> <laughs> just my number. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, so so I was just my phone rang and I thought it was this, and then and then he said it was Richie Horton, and I, you know, you just think, what's going on here? That, that's crazy. And he said he wanted to sign it for a compilation. I thought, of course, <coughs> absolutely. You know, that's great. Um, so that got released. Um, and then all of a sudden, it's just like these emails coming in, inquiries, people getting in touch. I'm like, well, oh, this is this is a bit mad. And mm-hmm. Like people want to book me all mm-hmm. over the place. And I thought, ah, I, can't, I can't do this myself. And mm-hmm. so I managed to get a, uh, it was actually Chris Lamb started doing a, doing a few kind of bookings for me, just looking after things at mm-hmm. the time. And then, and then that was it. Yeah, I had to kind of give up my job. And so what were you working at at the time? I worked as a recruitment consultant. Right. Uh, in oil and gas industry. And uh, I basically, I just I just kind of said, uh, you know, I think this, there's something special happening here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to follow it. Mm-hmm. And I did. I mean, I had the support of my, my mum and dad, which was great as well, because uh, at the time they were, well, my mum's always been so supportive, so has my dad. <coughs> but I think my dad was a wee bit like, <coughs> Am I not sure about this? Gain up a job. Are you sure about Good this? Job. You know? But no, he was great, and so was so was my mum. So, mm-hmm. um, so just I just just went with it. So, so see, Amazing. Like, before that time, if we can go back to like before that, that kind of kicked off. Aye. Were you grown up around music? Like yeah, but yeah, I mean, my mum. I've said this in a lot of interviews before, but my my mum, she's she's mad, but in a good way. I'd be like twelve year old, and Carl Cox would be blasting away in the kitchen Pete Tong around constantly you know and at the time I wasn't like too into it mm-hmm. I was I was more into like I don't know Michael Jackson uh, just yeah. all that kind of stuff all <laughs> oh, that stuff I... um, and I played in a I played the trumpet as well at school played in a wee orchestra for a wee while and, and stuff so yeah I was lots of different influences coming in here and okay. there but I there was, there was techno banging on in my in my <laughs> house all the time Wow. Shows you how like amazing that is, like, being that young, how sponge like the brain is. Aye, like, subconsciously picking up wee things like you're not even aware. You're banging out Billy Jean and like you know Carol Cox is there, but it's like it shows you how much. Aye, I know, I know. It's uh, it's just good to take something from every, every, aye, every totally. type of music, you know. So did you um, play the trumpet, Brian? And did you progress into just having a a thirst for? Like, programs or like no. I don't know what you no no really no I mean I did things. I did get a set of decks first of all started buying records as, as, as you do you know mm. started getting hooked in that a wee bit and then it obviously just um, I mean, it was strange how it happened my mum my mum was doing a bit of teaching at this 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 place and um, she mentioned it was Southwest Music and Arts or something like that this thing they were doing a a bit like this you know where they're getting people in to learn how to do things. And I went along a couple of times and they had a few programmes going, one being Acid Pro. Mm. I was like, oh, I like this. I, I think I could maybe work with this, you know. So I got a copy and I never came back. I just thought, I know what I'm going to do mm-hmm. here. <laughs> Saved up my, my money, uh, got a synthesizer, a mixing desk and stuff and just hammered it. Just got obsessed in it. Acid just, Pro. Aye. Sony Acid Pro, I still use it, you know, sometimes. I do, day. brilliant. It's... It's such a simple program mm-hmm. for the, for the way I work. You know, it's just it's just wow. perfect. Two hours, tracks done. You know. Aye. So, <clears throat> what's your main like DAW then? Like, do you use like obviously you've got if you still use a bit of Acid Pro? Is there a, another one you use no, as well? No, really. I just I just use Acid Isotope Ozone for polishing things in, but I record everything and just into the mixing desk. Yeah, I've got all drum machines, all that, just going into the mixing desk. Just I still got my PC. Right. Pretty old school, man, but it works for me. Mm-hmm. So and I does. did go through a phase of going, you know, I need to, I need to get the Ableton out here. I can't go walk around saying I'm using acid. <laughs> People, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like, uh, what do you use to make music? I'm like acid. No, like, does that not make you feel? Like that? <laughs> <laughs> is that how you come up with your ideas, I, man? <laughs> oh wow! I know it's, it's, but I did dabble a bit with Ableton, Cubase, and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. But the simplicity of, the, of this program, I just love it, mm-hmm. you know, it just, it's, it does. And you've stuck by it? I have stuck by it, yeah. I mean, I'm dabbling, I'm kind of mm-hmm. able to in that, but for me, I just, I just love the simplicity of this. Well, it's kind of like Harvey's set up, you know, Harvey's got quite the, the simple, aye, just in simple. his bedroom. Aye. You know, it's not even treated right, but it's 
to the way that it just works for him. It blows it's the way, me it's away. The way you use it, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the way you use it. Um, it totally is. And so. Harvey's setups, uh, it's, it's amazing. Like you go in there, and it's like this. It, it, it shouldn't work, but he's like, sit there, sit there. <laughs> you know what I mean, and it just you're like, how's this? How's this happening? Yeah, the most yeah, rocking like, stuff you've ever heard. Rocking, and uh, and it's he's not shy about turning up the volume, is he? No, <laughs> no, they, Harvey. They, Keep the volume down. <laughs> just calm down. I, uh, and you know, it just works. It's whatever works for you. Isn't exactly. It? Absolutely. You know, I I went through years of being ashamed of saying what I was using to make music. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, you, you you read some sound on sound magazine. I don't read it anymore because I don't know what they're talking about. To be quite honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, I, I I just get all insecure. I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. How, I, don't I don't know enough. I don't know enough. But mm. I can somehow get a sound out that, that, that people can recognise as my own sound. And mm. I think that's definitely one of the hardest things to do as a producer, to get your own yeah. stamp. Yep. But people can go, you know, that's, that's his track or whatever her track. It's, mm-hmm. it, I've, got, I've got that with it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to lose it. Yeah, for sure. And, and you're right to stick by it. I think these days, with the likes of these magazines, Sound on Sound, whatever, you're spoiled with, with choice. <sighs> and, uh, you know, we speak about that quite a lot. Like, mm-hmm. sometimes the limitation... Uh-huh. Breeds more creativity Absolutely, because yeah. you're like, well, I can only use this. Aye. So I've got I to get it. I don't good. have every sample pack, not a man. I, <laughs> there, I know. Like you know, a choice of tens of thousands of kick drums. You know, it's like. Aye. Well, so I, I see some producers. Every producer's got their own way of doing it, but sometimes I see producers. They'll take a ten weeks to do a track and all that. It's like mm-hmm. nothing perfect. And probably by the end of it, they've overcomplicated it and mm-hmm. they've. I just love quickness with making music. I love I love the ideas of just right, batter this down. And for mm-hmm. me, if, if I'm still working away after three, four hours on a track, I put it away. I put right? it away to one side. I, okay. I, I think the initial idea should just come so so quickly and, and fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what mm-hmm. I can... A lot of the tracks I've done that became quite well known, they were all very quick. Right. A couple, few hours okay. here and there. And, and know, that was we it? We polish up at the end, I. Brilliant. And that was it. But if I'm still there five, six, seven hours later, I just... Put mm-hmm. it away to the side for another day. See, I think I'm, I'm, I'm definite main point to take from that. So a lot of it is your own confidence, right? And I think it's it is it's the pressure of like what other people maybe perceive of you because in your mind you're like that. Oh Christ, this is really simple. What I'm doing, I'm aye. going to get found out or something like aye, that, aye. Right? right? But actually, it doesn't matter because there are people out there that you could say don't know anything and they're turning the world massive. Aye. And then I know people that know everything that are still in their bedroom that haven't done uh, anything. Exactly. So it's like, it's where does, how do you overcome that sort of confidence barrier where you're like, oh, can I put myself out there? What if I, I'm not the best DJ or I'm not the best Aye. producer, but it's like sometimes if it just works and you blow up, it's not it's not your fault. And it's not my f- no, it, And it doesn't actually matter because the stuff sounds good. It so, I saw it for myself when I, when I was playing the tracks I was making, they were working. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I thought, there's something going right here. Mm-hmm. They were actually working and then uh, so many DJs were playing my stuff and, and, and I can only take confidence from that and I can only yeah. say, well, I'm making something all right here. It must be working. So I put all that to one side about trying to make sure I, I was using all this up to up to the minute programmes and all that and I thought, no, I'm just going to I'm just gonna work with this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know it inside out. I mean, it's it's just perfect for me. Right. Uh, you know. So <clears throat> when you, an idea comes to you then, is it typically you jump to a drum machine with a groove or do you go like that wee uh, vocal I like to, I, I'd like to get the groove going first okay. aye have a nice aye, nice aye. groove going and then it's just ugh, the way I describe it some people laugh man it's like it's like a boat with sails mm-hmm. you build the kind of hull you've mm-hmm. got the groove going and then mm-hmm. it's like right okay let's start adding the nice wee bits onto the ship like the sail and all that <laughs> right. kind of stuff cool, that's cool. you know so like I'll, I'll be I'll have the groove going and one thing I do I love going to charity shops just in general <laughs> but I buy records all the time mm-hmm. old ones from the 60s, 70s, 80s, nice, whatever nice. and uh, I'll always just have a groove going and I'll listen to wee bits wee vocal clips or something mm-hmm. like that because what it's got is it's got a lovely, lovely texture mm-hmm. that a lot of modern stuff it doesn't really have so I like to I like to just go through a wee something will catch my ear and I'll go right okay wait a minute put a needle back and that Take it, compress it, and you reverb it. Just polish it up a bit, and then mm-hmm. put it over that groove, and then that's like how the way I like to right. to work. It's yeah. massive. Then that's massive. String bits or whatever. That's that's amazing. So, are you a case of you've got the drums and you hit record, and then it all goes into the program? Pretty much, I record it and then just edit it up in sound forge. Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just chop it up. You get you just get the bits. Compress. I compress every part, every section. I run through like isotope just to mm-hmm. to give it a nice fat sound and. Uh, 
Aye, that's that's taken away a lot. Amazing. <laughs> the, the track that really got me on to your sound and like opened my mind up was "Say What." Aye. And like, cause me and my mate John, like, we were, were obsessed over that tune. Like, cause I was, I mean, I grew up with like, you know, hardcore and Aye. Scott Brown and it started off rapid fast Aye. and slowly came down. <laughs> <laughs> to the 118. Yeah. I, love the, I love the hardcore as well, oh, man. man. I mean, I'd love to get Scott Brown in here one time just to, just to you know, pick his brain and, and get the story. Aye. Aye. Sure they you, make that happen. Know, like, I'm just sure. for you, man. Look, they <laughs> make that happen. That's a pure fanboy. Cause I mean, you grew up in that going through <laughs> school. Of course. And then, so I so say what that was the, the one that went wow so Cheers, this man. is techno proper and like there was a couple of other tracks like there's one grindhouse dub, dub Hi, that, yeah and that was at that age where it was like kind of all kind of a big mixing pot you know yeah, and like my original influences like the Mauro Picotto trancey I've, I've, I've always loved Picotto man BXR stuff was a was a big influence on me you know I absolutely love the BXR stuff mm. you know terrific Aye. I've been lucky enough to play with those guys lots yeah, of yeah. times you know like. Uh, Ricky, Ricky F and Zafirano, Zaffira, Mauro Picotto, mm -hmm. all these guys, you know, yeah. Ricky Leroy, wow, all guys like that, really, really nice, nice guys. Aye, you know, they had something good going then with BXR. Aye, it's, that's, that's an amazing thing about music. You get a group of guys and something happens, and Aye. you know, and like they, they create something with like the BXR movement, you know, Aye. and it influenced so many people from the, you know the transfer sound to you know Aye, it was everything. Aye, uh, uh, I used to just. When a new one came out, I was just like, oh man, you know, as soon as I got my hands on it, didn't even need to listen to it. Aye. Just, just, you knew it was good. Just knew it was good. Uh, but do, you, do you not think that just shows you the strength of, again, people coming together and working together aye. and doing stuff? Totally. You know, and it's like, it's essentially like a, another form of like an NWA there where you've aye. got like people coming together and creating something. <laughs> oh. I love the idea of that. Like, oh, I really sharing, I, sharing ideas and stuff like that is great. There's enough, there's enough pie for us all out there. And aye. this is the thing. I think a lot of people maybe feel like threatened. Or it's usually down to ego. Uh -huh. And usually you find the egos in the people that are coming up. Whereas people that have done quite well, they are more than happy to use it. Like, oh, no, I think no, it's only natural this. you should pass on and maybe work with, with people who have got a real interest, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, for, for me, I, I, I've always, I always kind of like do lots of different things in my music. I'll put a, one out, a bit like Say What, where you've got a mm -hmm. groove and it works in the, I mean, that blew up. That was huge, that mm -hmm. track. Yeah. And then I'll put an absolute just rolling banger out. I, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard before oh, some promoters are don't, they're not sure about booking you because they don't know what they're going to get from mm -hmm. you I'm like shut up mm -hmm. <laughs> I can play Bergen after DJ Rush and I can play after Nick Fanciulli and my, mm -hmm. I, I love it all yeah you know I really That's do the versatility I love it all. being a DJ aye I love it all you know um, I mean just there in Australia I did uh, two gigs of it, one three four I was playing at in the first one second one I was doing I think about one two two BPM right. just loved it I love it all uh, yeah. you know and, and I think if I was to sit in the studio and it was just constant one thirty, I'd, I'd give up man mm -hmm. you know I That's do love boring, doing it mm -hmm. but I like to do other things as well you know I like to just whatever you know I mean, yeah. in terms of like, right, so that that's an interesting point because I think a lot of producers out there, like they struggle with, you know, it's like they've got something that maybe sounds really housey. Uh-huh. And then they've got some like, like I want to make kind of dark techno, but it's like, I really don't know what to do with these nine projects that are all like, one's progressive, one's housey. Aye. What would you say to guys that are really trying to find their sound or people that are meant to be known for something, but they've got all this other stuff? <sighs> What do you do with that? Do you make an your, alias? Your, your you? sound should shine throughout all the, the, the tracks, you know. Um, just put them out. Just put them out, man. If uh, You know, your sound will be heard mm -hmm. in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. doesn't mm -hmm. need to be this particular rolling techno one. Your, your sound will be in there. Uh, I mean, look at a guy like Mark Broom, you know, who I respect mm -hmm. highly. He's He puts out what he wants. A bit funky, a bit groovy, mm -hmm. a bit of what I need an incredible producer mm -hmm. but he puts out just what he wants to put mm -hmm. out you know um, so I would say I would say that is it just just do what you want to do and put it out just under your own thing like uh, not not bother with an alias not or just maybe like, later on but just get your name out there yeah, yeah, yeah. just push it all out yeah. just you know see what catches see what catches if something catches fire maybe focus a yeah. wee bit more on that mm -hmm. makes sense you know that and makes then, a lot of sense aye, and then just uh, like just do what you want to do man just, mm -hmm. just follow your own path. would you say uh, like yourself a uh, a vessel that's important for doing that kind of thing is having your own label. Yes. So when you're saying put it out, I it's it's good to have your own vessel because then you're I, in control. You're in control. control. Absolutely. Uh, one of the best things I, I did was start my label. You know, right. at the time I was putting out stuff on 
drum code saved and stuff. But I thought, no, I don't really want to have, have my own platform here. It was mm-hmm. actually Edit Select, Tony, that, that kind of, he came up with Beck, Beck Audio, the BEK, right. you know. He was like, take out the, uh, take out a letter, mm-hmm. you know, that'll, that'll work. So I stuck with that, but I love it. I love just, hey, that's good. Let's get it out. Mm-hmm. Let's get it out next month instead of having to send it yeah, away yeah. and just eighteen wait months and down the line or something. And, then and you're at the you mercy. Get, of you're, other like, you're just getting messed about a yeah. wee bit, like, and you don't want to write to them and say, "What's happening mm-hmm. with my them?" Because if you don't hear anything, they're probably not going to put mm-hmm. it out. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes they'll surprise you a year down the line. <laughs> right, we're ready to put it out, uh, but not at least that <laughs> six months ago or something. But mm-hmm. having your own vessel there, like you say, to, to put your stuff out is great. S- speaking mm-hmm. of that vessel then, like, what do you look for in, in tracks then, like, you know, for that? Is it predominantly mostly your own or do you, do you like to the, bring... The, the, the idea on? initially was to set up just to put my own stuff right. out when I wanted. Mm-hmm. But it changed. To, I was working a lot with Speedy J at the time and, mm-hmm. and, and guys like that and Mark, Mark Broom, and, and they were... There was tracks kicking about, and I thought, nah, I need Geezer. that. Come on, man! <laughs> I need, I, yeah, I need to put that out and stuff like that. So, so a, f- a few artists came on board, and and so now I've, I've the main kind of rules with it is it's just got to have character. Mm-hmm. The music's got to have character, energy. Mm-hmm. It's got to have color about it. Mm-hmm. You know, n- none of this kind of like predictable. I know exactly what's kind of coming techno. Yeah. That's just a good genre there, actually. Yeah, that's a yeah. I, I, I know what's coming techno. <laughs> 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 There's a few that fall into that category for sure, but I suppose that's the same with every genre, isn't it? Aye. There's so many different, like, hip-hop that to the outside person that doesn't like it, but like, that all sounds the same. Yeah. And it's like, it's hard to argue. It's like, even with techno, you could be like, that all sounds the same. It's like, but see, once you get it, does it? I don't, does, I don't, I know. I, I mean, if you... I don't want to say names, but I'll say Planetary Assault Systems looks later as an example. Mm-hmm. We played at my, my Beck audio party there. Um, and he's a genius. His techno is a, a total league above. Mental. It's it's mental. It's unpredictable. Mm-hmm. It's raw. It's energetic. It's, well, the name's strange it's, as well. It's, really, exci- right? it's just exciting. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's coming in with the wee elements that he puts in it. That is genius to me. That's what I want to hear. And that's what keeps me, me buzzing mm-hmm. with techno. Mm. Um a lot of uninspiring stuff out there, absolutely, but it's the same in all genres. All genres. You know? Um, mm. cream, so. cream rises, as they say, isn't it? It's yeah. Like, and you can follow a template of something that's working, but that'll only take you so far. Uh-huh. Because it's like, it's not really you being yourself. Yeah, it's thing. one of the worst things you can do is kind of go back to a track that did well when you're producing mm. and go, I think I'll go back and take Let's that kick drum again. I'll, uh, I'll take yeah. that wee, you know, and try and just, and then all of a sudden you're replicating what you've done and it's probably the worst way to go you know you've always got to it's interesting like, there's not a lot of creativity in it you know if you're if you're working that way if you're you know, if you're referencing quite heavily yeah um, mm. something that has done well because th- there's always an interesting one like the tracks that say you would be replicating mm-hmm. they were big say six months ago and the producer who made it is already on to the next Aye. big thing so if you, you're already behind and like what might actually happen yeah. and, and kind of blow Abs- up. Absolutely, you know I mean? aye. So you're trying That's to make true. an out of date style. Aye. Go, all right, I've done it, I've done it. I <laughs> mean, that was a year ago, that sound. Aye. You know, but even even that, again, it's just, it, the policies and politics and music, like they fry my brain, you know what I mean? Because it ultimately should be down to, does it sound good? Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's the same as a DJ as well. It's like, because you look at a lot of lineups, and again, same in every genre, so many lineups consistently are always the same. Exactly. And it's like, yeah. there's it, it's harder to see you know, pocket side kind of up and comers coming through because it's all the main names. And sometimes these main names are playing a festival and they've got four sets in the one in the one festival. Uh, it is very hard for, for new people coming through. So what, what yeah. is the advice for the newcomers coming up? Because I know guys that haven't really kicked a ball yet and they feel like giving up. And it's kind of yeah. like, look, man, you've got to grind this aye, out. You've aye. got to have thick skin in this, this game. Aye. You've got to love it, I think. You've got, you've, got to have you, you've got to love it, man. Passion. You've got to love it, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so easy to... I get so many knockbacks myself, you know, but I was mm-hmm. sending out demo after demo and I was getting uh, emails back just saying, uh, keep trying, you know, but even just getting an email back saying, you know, thanks mm-hmm. a lot for sending it, that gave me encouragement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in this day and age, I must be... I mean, for, for example, myself, I must be getting about close to 100 demos a week for Beck Audio, wow. you know. It's It's... And one thing I state in my website, it's like, if you're going to send something, make it personal to me. Mm-hmm. Have an interest and mm-hmm. say it's... Because you get a lot of the demos coming in where it's just saying, please listen, thanks. And you're like, no, mm-hmm. I'm not going to listen because... You've not you taken could, you, could, you could have sent that out to, to a million other people. Yeah. yeah. So 
Massive, massive point. Everyone listen. Mm-hmm. That like such a massive point. Like it, personal it, it, I, I mean, if you, but first of all, you've got to believe in what you're doing. You've got to have a love for it, like you say. Mm-hmm. And then if you're going to target a couple of labels, make it personal to them, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and the chances are they will listen if you, if you write the email properly. Um, yeah. Just, 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 you've just got to keep keep pushing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess that there will get a time where you think, ah, you know. I'm 70 now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't think this is happening. I'm still, still chatting, but is that USB? <laughs> um, well, listen to that clap. <laughs> I know. But I just got to have that in a belief, you know, and just, just do things in, in the right way. Yeah. One yeah. thing, um, you know, you get a good name for is actually, you know, being personal back to people. You know, a lot of people have come into the studio mm-hmm. and I've said, you know, Gary, get back. You know, oh, right, and that's yeah. something you do do, and which is which is amazing because obviously people at your level, a lot of them maybe don't, they don't take that time out. But you know, it I shows. remember how I was, you know, yeah. that's what you're the doing. demos, you know. Yeah. Uh, I kind of get back to all of them. It's like, but uh, as I say, if someone writes to me in a personal way, I'll get back to them. Mm-hmm. But you think of that when you were getting uh-huh. the replies for guys saying, "Look, it's not right, but keep trying." Yeah, and that's encouraging. Absolutely. So for people, even like we yourself, it's so weird how life just works out. And it's like Aye. you're the guy in that position Aye. now for so many people. I'll always remember that. I'll always yeah. remember it and what it felt like for me. So if I can do that, maybe for for someone else, I try. I try and give a wee bit of encouragement if I can I mean yeah. don't get me wrong there's demos that come in and you're like whoa this is so unbelievably bad but like, why have you said I'll, I, <laughs> I'll, I'll still try and say, say at something. least something that they can Aye. maybe cling on to mm-hmm. uh, that will give them a bit of a bit of hope to, to, to push on with it's, it. It's it's so important, you know. It's you like don't let slam the door in their face nah, and say, look, you give up. No point in caution that because everyone starts, you know, shite. They do. Oof, like I said, listening back to my stuff, it's we, we were listening back to some of your stuff <laughs> recently. And I actually, dug, I don't know how I found the hard drive, but it was like blowing the dust off it, you know. I plugged it in. I'm like, whoa, it still works. And, and I'm, my God, there was like the first few Awful. tunes of mine. Got to start somewhere. Aye, <laughs> totally. It just, aye. It just, um, but it's, it's, it's great to hear that actual progression and journey yeah. as well. Right, aye. maybe you, you might or you might not have. What, have you had any kind of weird emails through before that you're like, Jesus I got a guy Christ. sent me a demo that was basically, what my, I did a track called Video Siren and <laughs> The guy basically took the track video signing and sent it to me back <laughs> with his name on it. <laughs> You're joking. I was like, I just said, is this a joke? And he says, no, I hope you like my demo. You're like, mate, it's my tune. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know that way you're like you're, you're hovering over social media like that, but you know, I don't yeah, want yeah, yeah. to bring it to the trigger. Man, but you know? aye, no, that was a disgrace, man. That, he's, he's, he should give up. Mm-hmm. He should. That, aye, that, I mean, doing, doing things like that is appalling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, has he done any research? I think he put a, like a big clap in it or something like that. Just, just layered just, it right over the top. Aye, it? but it still had all the pure time. And all and that. I, <laughs> oh, I just thought, what, what are you doing, mate? Jesus, you know, shocking! Wow. Uh, and what's what's maybe the nicest or quickest you know email that someone's came to and you went like, ah, right, we're signing that, you know? Uh, <sighs> Sorry, put you in the spot. Yeah, well, no, I'm not too. I mean, Ryan Mackay sent through a couple of stuff recently, and I've just been. But, uh, mm-hmm. there you go man you Ryan that. said that I actually aye, told us yeah, that didn't yeah, he aye, I'm having that he's doing some great stuff at the moment I'm just releasing his next EP but um, I, there's there's been a couple I can't I can't think yeah. straight away but um, you, when you know you know yeah you, 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 it's a good feeling aye it'll slap me in the face and it's mm-hmm. like this tune's a belter mm-hmm. you know? I'll tell you I'll, ne- I'll never forget the day um, Clouds who are uh, yep. great producers as well I mean Again, it goes back to that something different. Uniqueness. Uniqueness, you know. Um, but I remember I started a wee label called Overly Assembly with Chris Lamb. Uh, and we released Chain to a Dead Camel by by Clouds, which was a massive, massive, massive track. But I that was one of those moments when the email came in. It was like, poof, that's going out wow. <laughs> you know that's unbelievable you know? didn't want to say to him too much like I think we just kind of went it's alright we might we might we might put it out yeah. uh, but we were thinking run about your room in your box oh, like, man. <laughs> <laughs> what a track what a track man you know um, I mean so is there any though as well that you've maybe listened and went nah and then you've went you know what I'll listen to it again and then on the second or third listen, you're like, hmm, actually. Because you know sometimes music's Some, like that. You'll exactly. hear it and you're like, I do not I, like that. Exactly. And then you'll be playing it going, oh, do you like that? And I'm like, actually, mm-hmm. that's starting to seep in now. It, it doesn't happen too often for me. I can kind of tell 
relatively quickly Off the if, I, if I'm, if I'm going to have it. There has been times before where I, I've got, I'll give it another try and I played it out and I've been pleasantly surprised. But not in terms of, aye, it's not really happened too many times, especially with demos where I've come back to it and thought, mm. Mm, See, here's a, a question. Do you think it matters about tune names? We're chained to a dead camel. <laughs> like straight away, straight away, right? If I'm if I'm going through a list, or if I'm searching for tunes or something, right, and I see a tune that's called "Here We Go," and then I see a tune called "Chained to a Dead Camel," I'm like, I'm going to listen to the, the dead aye, camel one aye, just because I like just the sound because of the name. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think having a cool name is is good. It helps. It, it can. Does, it does help. Um, sometimes it's good to. Make up a name first and then build your track around that name a wee bit. Right. Silicon Soul told me that. It's interesting. They, I've never heard that before. That's cool. They said it kind of builds up a wee sort of idea in your head right from the get go, from the name. And wow. A kind of that, concept almost. Like, yeah. That, yeah, kind of, a, a little bit. Um, <laughs> who knows what it would have sounded like if you'd named the, the, if they'd <laughs> named the tune that first and then they changed your dead camera. I, I, I don't so, want to hear what that tune would sound like. But it's brilliant. And as you say, you, people are going to go, what's that? And, and yeah. they'll probably check Quirkiness. it out. But I, some people can be very lazy with, with track names. I've been quite lazy in the past myself. How do you come up with a track name? Is it to, down to the vocal saying something? You go, right, I'll yeah, call it that. Yeah, maybe I, if there's something that a vocal you think it says, it says that, you'll just yeah. take it, you know. Mm. Um, like the track I said, Video Sign, and it's got this vocal that sort of goes, I don't know what it says. But I thought that sounds a bit like Video Siren, but it worked. Mm -hmm. um, uh, say what was, I think there was a wee, uh, because I didn't really know what she was saying. Mm -hmm. I thought I was in my mind saying, say what? Mm -hmm. So uh, other times I'll just look <laughs> around my studio and kind of go, you know, yeah, uh, to to deal, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I'll just stick with that, you know. Aye. So just just that just depends, man. You know? Just your environment. Aye. So musically for yourself, then what are you working on at the moment? At the moment, um, <clears throat> I'm just getting a bunch of tracks together. Really, just at the moment, Vibes, think, thinking about where where I'm gonna what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna do another EP in Beck. I like to do a couple of them a year. Mm -hmm. So I just put out the ten year compilation there. Mm -hmm. um, How did that go down? Ah, good, good. It was it was took a bit of time just getting all that together, getting the artists on. Yeah. Th those are artists that have been on this radar for a while. They've sent a few things, and, and I decided just to ask them if they'd like to contribute. So mm -hmm. it's good to have Slam on it. It's good to huge. Um, aye. Slam Massive, I mean, I mean, the OGs the of the guy. scene here, aren't they, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would be good to get Slam, slam on here, actually, and get the, get the stories from, from way back, you know? Aye. Aye, they're, they're amazing. They're all like, absolute legends. Aye, yeah. you know, They were great with me at the start as well, you know? The whole summer crew have been brilliant with me. Yeah. Aye. I mean, it's for us as well, like, you know, for the studio, being involved with SOMA as well. And yeah. It's, it's good to see, obviously, we're involved in SOMA school. Yeah. Which is the big education Absolutely, thing. Absolutely, that's, that's back now, and to be contributing to that in a grander scale and seeing all the youngsters coming through the, Aye. you know the, the wide eyes seeing yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. know the next Gary Beck's walking through that corridor or picking up a leaflet for a college course or yeah yeah Aye. Like the first time I went to SOMA school was, I was like that you know I was just like oh my god there's there's vector lovers over there mm -hmm. you know just like it was, it was mm -hmm. massive mm -hmm. I mean I, I used to I used to work in the arches behind the bar Um <laughs> I only got a job in there because I wanted to kind of like be right in amongst it and just learn. Good idea. Aye, I just, uh, behind the barn and Richie Hunt would be playing, Jeff Mills would be playing, I was just, zero seven, it'd be all different types of music. And I just get right in amongst it. Mm -hmm. And and they were doing the SOMA skills then. Uh, and even, I was just like, I can't believe I'm in amongst this. Mm -hmm. And it was a good way of getting to know some people in the yeah, scene. Yeah. Like, like Dave Clark, the slam guys and stuff. So I kind of, I thought of a different wee route in, Mm -hmm. uh, instead of just sending out demos, I yeah. wanted to actually get to know the personable. The, the personal. I mean, so you can Aye. meet them. It's sort of similar to working in a record shop, I suppose. A bit Aye. where you're getting all of the, the vibes, the flavors of different DJs, People different coming nights. In. Aye, yeah. different Aye. nights going on. You know, and you might hear something that, like, I don't know, an inside out and an impression. You join the two ideas together, and you're like, absolutely. Wow, absolutely. Like, you know. I used to love both. I used to love both of them. I Aye, went same. inside out and, and pressure. I, I even there was a night I was supposed to be working behind the bar in the arches. And I phoned in sick, and then I went to the arches. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sneaked in. I think it was Picotto that was on actually. Was it? And I was just so I was totally at the time I was totally obsessed with Picotto. And I thought I need to, I need to get in. And I I managed to sneak in, and 
get into the crowd and, mm. and nobody noticed me, man. Had a wee hat on and all that. Aye. There's some manager watching this now. Like, <laughs> I knew, I knew, I seen him that night. I knew. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that is really, really cool. Though. But again, it is, it's an alternative route. Cause like, alternative, I right. think as so many people, it's like, it's down to common sense, I think, a lot of the time in terms of how to go out there and network with people how to go about things. Like Aye. You actually go out and physically meet them. Uh -huh. You know, it's always going to be better when you've met someone other than just getting an email. Yeah. And it doesn't mean the email's not going to work. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, it's just ways of like, how do you think outside the box here? How can you get closer to these uh, exactly, people? Exactly, exactly. I mean, my office where I used to work, it was around the corner from the Soma office. And I used to go in every couple of months with a demo I'd be shitting myself mm -hmm. you know I'd be just so, so nervous because uh, it was like an empire to me so man and, and everything they were doing and uh, I'd, I'd go in and I'd knock on the door and <coughs> sometimes it was like yes <coughs> and then the door would close and yes and then I, I finally get invited in it was Glenn Gibbons yeah we had him on the show actually yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and I sat down with Glenn and, and we went through a, a, a couple of tracks you know and he was great he just kind of said you know, like it's good Mm -hmm. why, why don't you maybe go back and try and try and do a wee bit of this and, which is great so I was, I was I mean that alone for me was buzz I was totally buzzing you know like the just, sliding door ah, thing yeah. the oh, <laughs> I know. what's the passcode lost <laughs> <laughs> the eyes <laughs> yeah, I don't know <laughs> I, I was it was magic you know so that just gave me gave me the impetus to, to go back into the studio work <clears> on a wee bit sent some stuff in it wasn't quite right wasn't quite right and mm -hmm. then finally they, they kind of took something so is there any like secret things that you use that you can share with us just about your process you know we, we discussed it a little bit there obviously you record into acid pro brilliant you touch it up at the end is yeah. there anything you do that you could share that you know might help those that are struggling to finish a track or you know like that kind of thing because for us teaching this stuff that's the main issue isn't it? people are good at ideas and getting them down yeah. but they just hit this this wall it happens, and then, happens to everyone man mm -hmm. I, I mean it happens to me <coughs> quite a lot Excuse i need me. to just I need to just get out and go for a walk and just right. go away or sometimes just finish for the day. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. I mean, my wee tip there about the, the getting old records and stuff like that, that, that yeah. really, really worked for me. Not only the enjoyment of just going through the old records, that was great, but see yeah. having a wee groove going on in the background or something that you, that you like mm -hmm. gets you moving and just doing that wee... Just dropping it. Just dropping it, aye. And then a wee, a wee something, will, oh, go back to that. It's such an enjoyable mm -hmm. way of working. Samplings, samplings, it goes on all the time, obviously, but... Yeah. For so long. I like sampling old stuff <coughs> and yep. just totally changing it into something completely different. Yeah, so, I think, so I think that's a good thing for someone to someone to try. Mm -hmm. um, See, I think you'll find all of the biggest tunes ever have all been sampled. Well, of course. I and I actually it. seen the video yesterday from Defected. And they put out like uh, they've put out this series of famous tunes that were sampled. And one, yeah. one of my favourite kind of pastimes is finding old music and stuff for you know like just ideas and stuff. Like I love it, man. Yeah. Or finding ones that have been going no way, no yeah, way, yeah. You know, and, and having yeah. that. But like um, you'll find so many, like even like your Kanye West to to everybody. It's like they are all sampling, and they are yeah. like the biggest tunes. So it's like I suppose. <clears throat> Just go out and try and sample something and create yeah, it and but, make it your but, own, but, but it's making it your exactly, own. Exactly, but don't sample a full track, man. You know, <laughs> and like, send it back to me. <laughs> you know, like that guy did to me. <laughs> Crazy. Um, it's different sampling something, though. I, I find it weirder if you're sampling, like, let's say you're a techno artist and you're sampling other techno. Uh -huh. I think that's that's probably more difficult because it's like you're maybe taking an idea from something I similar, just, I, whereas if you're going back... Yeah, and, yeah. You know, yeah, that's right. You're going back to something that was 20-odd years old. Mm -hmm. that's something You can get away with doing a wee sample here in there but don't don't go into the last drum code release or whatever and take a hook from it and mm -hmm. Aye. yeah i mean I, I, I heard a track the other day it's, it's talking about chain to the camel again but it's a total rip off yeah i'm not gonna put the guy in the shit you know mm -hmm. but it, it was, tell us off yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'll all do um a total rip off you know how you how, how, how he got away with it i don't know but um yeah if you're gonna sample do it Doing mm -hmm. a, a way that's clever and a way that's quite fun and interesting, mm -hmm. like it's I say, with the vinyl, you know, do, do a bit of that. Also, also, it's good for the charity shops as well. Yeah, putting the quids in there. So. It definitely <laughs> is. Now, something we'll we'll touch on that I know is not your biggest thing, and you probably don't like it too much, right? But it's the social media side of stuff, right? Because the landscape of where we're at you now, <laughs> you know, the the landscape. Because I know people that are like, you know, I actually was speaking to a promoter not long ago, and I was like trying to get some stuff in there, and then it's like, you know, they were like, ah, you know, there's got to be, you know, for for artists that we look at, it's got to be massive on the socials and, oh. and this and that. Mm, and for me, I'm like, whoa man we're taking away for the music here I, what's going on you're talking absolutely. about numbers on a 
Talk about Facebook numbers. Page, aye, man. aye. It's, so. it's appalling what's going on. And a lot of, a lot of brilliant uh, producers are, are really suffering. Mm-hmm. Really suffering because they've not got this big machine behind them with a huge amount of likes and all that kind of stuff. You probably know, I don't, I'm not on social media that much. So I really... Mm-hmm. I, I, I find... I find that... Say I'm going into the studio and I've put a post up that morning. I find that's my day ruined. Mm-hmm. I can't think properly because I'm always just sort of like having one eye on sort of maybe mm-hmm. how the post is doing or, yeah. or uh, you know, something like that. And mm. it, it, it distracts away from what you should be really putting your heart and soul <clears throat> into. And... and Wow. I, I, as I said, I shouldn't swear, but it is a head fuck to a lot of people, mm-hmm. you know. Um, especially the likes thing. I, I think it'd be magic if they just took the like button away from everything, mm-hmm. and then you'd probably start to see the the, mu- the real producers coming through again, you know, because the music would talk. Yeah, wow, <laughs> um, that, that, that's a great way to think about that there, because that's the the source of the anxieties for not just music. It's, that everything, for, it's for, not just music. I'm it's, not good enough. The uh, like button, exactly. You know what I mean? Because it's, you're like, it's, you know, a, it's a killer. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, man. I mean, it's a for people's mindset and all walks of life. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a, a young kid could be at school and they put a post up and it gets up two likes. <sighs> That's to, mm-hmm. you know that that's going to affect that kid all day, well, you all, know. Day uh, um, all day and all, all week. Absolutely, even. especially and if they might even get bullied because of it. Uh-huh. Exactly, you only get two, yes. exactly. <clears throat> Take I it get away. seventy likes. Aye, aye. You've only got one. Take I, mean? It, I mean, I've had people say to me who are close to me, like just saying, kind of like, you didn't, you didn't like my post. I'm like, that's so. F- so <laughs> what? Aye. You know, yeah. I still like, like you, mate. I, I still worry. like you. I, I know. <laughs> I mean, I just don't have the f- need to to post everything that like. Bits of social media is quite good, letting people know what you're doing. Like what you guys are doing, it's fantastic to, mm-hmm. to let people know. But there's some people that are just absolutely addicted, mm-hmm. addicted to it. And uh, as you can see it when you walk down the street, you know, people are banging into walls, what, looking at their phone. And it's, yeah. it's, don't know how bad it's going to get. So I try and detach myself a bit from it. I mean, like Instagram, I just joined at the end of last year. Uh, and it was years and years of being told you need to get on. Yeah, I says no, I, I, I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing need. it, you know. And then, and then it's like, right, okay, it doesn't I'll, I'll need to do this, you know. And, and finally, I'm on it. But it's just another distraction mm-hmm. for me. So speaking of distractions, then how do how do you set your your week up or your daily routine to get like maximum output? Because that's always a big thing with the amount of distractions uh, we've got. Yeah. How do you get into that routine? Or? Well, my week my week goes a bit like this. Uh, Monday is family time just just chilling out man taking your mind off everything Tuesday and Wednesday I go in the studio um, and then Thursdays I kind of catch up with with emails promos demos and then that's for the first half of the day and then the rest of the day I'm just out with the family and stuff like that and then I'm usually away on the Friday the Saturday and then I'll be travelling home on the Sunday Sunday night's my bottle of wine night is no it? in fact every night's my bottle of wine night <laughs> <laughs> but I think Sunday's Sunday's a night where I just like to sit down, catch up in the football. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge football fan. Mm-hmm. Um, catch up in the football and just have my glass of wine <clears> and my decompress. Uh, decompress, and then it's just that day on Monday just to absolutely relax. Yeah. So I find that works for me a lot. Mm. Nice um, day to take off as well. Monday, like, you know, the world hates a Monday. I love hates a Monday. But it's no the Monday they hate. It's they hate what they're doing I every know. day. Do you know I, what I mean? Exactly. And that's why they're hating Mondays. You know, know what I mean? I know it's a very it's a, a very lucky position to be in, mm-hmm. you know. I never, I never, uh, I never, I never forget that, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I've got friends and stuff who are they just kind of stand their job, and, mm-hmm. and, and so I'm, I'm always so grateful what, what this has given me, you yeah. know, in my life. Yeah, it's very important for anyone who achieves success in anything that, that gratitude has to follow. Absolutely, or you just Absolutely. lose your spot, you lose how you got there in the first place. Aye. You know, I, I see some artists who it's just totally money focused. You know, it's like well, I'm not playing unless I'm getting this this mm-hmm. mega fee and all this kind of stuff. And it's something that's actually, I mean, a lot of clubs are shutting down all over the world. Lots in Italy, mm-hmm. um, obviously clubs here and stuff like that. These bigger artists are kind of like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. You know, I'm I'm a big festival player now. Mm-hmm. I'm, I want my twenty grand. Wow. And these club these clubs are suffering because they can't just come down a wee bit and help the clubs mm-hmm. a wee Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. You know, and they need to, they need to help the clubs. Mm-hmm. You know, Club Sixty Nine. What Ivan is doing there is 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 terrific. Mm-hmm. He's he's uh, it's, it's quite a hard. You know, it's a great venue. I love it. That's why I did my ten year party there. But it's very hard to get big DJs to, to bring the fee down and yeah. or agents to, to even 
say. You know. It's because they're taking the bigger cut as well, isn't it? I mean, exactly. you know, it's, Mal- all about, it's all about taking the cut, you know. Malorca Lee posted something recently, which was amazing. And he was like, um, he's like, you get paid for traveling and Aye. waiting about airports and being messed about the gigs Aye. for free. Aye. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. I was like, that is the way it should be looked at. You know, it's like, cause it is about going down there and having a good night. And yeah. you don't, you totally should have a club fee, a festival fee, yeah. you know, this and that. And if you're getting more money, great. I mm-hmm. mean, you, this is your li- livelihood. Aye. You need to do it. But at the Aye. same time, there's got to be a bit of come and go because you're yeah. potentially letting down thousands exactly, of people because, as well. Do you know exactly. What I mean? Cause I mean, like if you're, some of those DJs are playing four times a week, probably get whatever, 10, 10 grand out. it's like at least one of them why do you support the, the, mm-hmm. the, the clubs that kind of got, two grand. They, they kinda, they kinda got you into the you need, we need to help the clubs at the moment because mm-hmm. they're struggling mm-hmm. um, and that's what I'm saying like, my agent myself we're kind of like we'll, we'll kind of discuss the, the gig mm-hmm. and see how many people you know like you know, and then we'll maybe go aye we'll, we'll do it because mm-hmm. I think the clubs are definitely need, needing help right now they're suffering big time aye you know and if the clubs go you know what, is, is it, it's just festivals then? Aye, or no, like, you know it could be festivals illegal parties well, I don't know but. I'm not insinuating anything but you know, well, you know <laughs> I might go back to that though you're right the illegal party yeah. things happened you know as, as a kind of reaction to like clubs getting overpriced or Aye. you know it's kind of resorted back to you know the underground almost uh-huh. which is a good thing it shows that there's always going to be a thirst for it yeah do you know what I mean no matter yeah. what you know, whether it's an, an illegal one or whether it's mm. like you know Aye. you know it's, it's interesting I think people do love that idea of going ah oh. Something a bit illegal, mm-hmm. or, you know, a wee bit edgy. Uh, I, again, that's oh, why I there's like the de- there's a details uh, there. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's again, that's why I like Club Sixty Nine. Oh, because it's like you're looking about, going, where is it? Uh, it's mm. under, and then you go down under, and then it's it's just there uh, under that restaurant. Then you sure? Uh, 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 it's probably just that wee narrow door. That's what Luke Slater said. You know, he said this is just like going back to the nineties. He said mm. he absolutely loved it. Uh, it's great. Uh, so that was good. How did hear. the the club night go? Because you 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 went. I was there. I didn't I, even see you. I was with Lindsay. I thought anyone saw you. Mate, I, was t- I was too busy <laughs> dancing, mate. You know what well, I mean? that's good. That's uh, I was head down, man. Excellent. Um, I was there with Lindsay and uh, Lindsay Green, Raymond, and, and that crew. So we're just up the back again. Lindsay and Raymond doing doing great stuff. Aye, well, great, you know, great friends. Yeah. That are in here, we work on music together as uh-huh. well. I've got Aye. some stuff to say. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Lindsay sends me. Well, the latest stuff, stuff the latest stuff's done really well. Yeah, yeah. Big support and stuff, you know. And that's the first couple of tracks they're putting together. Uh-huh. You know, Brilliant. Carol Cox support and all that. You know, Aye, and it's like, what is actually going on here? So Aye, it's, it's like. Aye, that's, that's some great. feeling uh, it's, a, it's a good buzz it was a good night it was it was, uh, it was good it's really really good I enjoyed it you know I, I was uh, I was taking it easy aye I had a gig the next day so I was taking it easy I only had like a bottle of Jack right <laughs> <laughs> so, just the one just the one <laughs> aye it was, a, it was a great night though again the sound system in there is amazing like uh, it's a bit like the sub club that way aye, it's, it's, yeah yeah I heard that it was like modelled on that I don't know if that's true or not, but somebody said that to me. Like they get the idea, one get the idea from the other. I don't know because they, they came sure. about around the same time, did, did they? they not? I don't know. I don't know how long Club Sixteen has been about. A sub club has obviously been about for. Mm-hmm. But, um, it was so long because it was before it was that. It was like mad ballroom stuff and all aye. that, wasn't it? And there was like kind of jazzy stuff going aye. on. And like it's always been a, a pretty, it's a hot spot, you know. It's always mm-hmm. been good. Mm. Speaking of like the local scene, then like up and coming acts. Is there anybody you've got your your eye on from Scotland at the moment? At the moment? Um, well, uh, Ryan, Ryan's Ryan. obviously doing good stuff. Um, he's kind of up and coming, but he's been doing some good stuff for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to try and support him as much as I can at the moment with the with the stuff he's putting out on Beck. He, he's doing a party with me in, in, in Austria, so I've got him in the lineup for Brilliant. that. Um, in terms of others, uh, uh, you get the odd you get the odd good tracks coming along. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, Sometimes hard to put your finger on it. Aye, aye. But you know, Scotland's one of these places that it's it's always so been much. so creative. Yeah, it's so creative. Like you know, it's it's, it's renowned for creativity. Scotland, you know, and aye. like so co-accused and you know. Well, that's right. I'm, obviously, I would, I would I'd say co-accused <coughs> and what they're doing is, is good. You know, I think they're they're on the, the cusp of something really good. It's at unique. The moment. Aye, aye. What they're doing, which yeah. is uh, you know, right, they've got right such a they've it. got such a drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, to succeed in it and they, and they are they, and they will you know yeah. so um, there's guys about like I was like someone like Robert Johnson as well you know yeah um, clearly man so, he's going to freak out clearly he's no I mean f- clearly such a passionate guy about what he does you know and he's doing some good music yeah this is a perfect example of someone that shouldn't give up mm-hmm. because he sent me some stuff and it has been good and there's been no other occasion I have played one mm-hmm. or two of his tracks 
he's an artistic guy as well. He does he does his artwork mm-hmm. as well. But this is an example of someone that shouldn't give up. Mm-hmm. He's he's definitely got a talent for mm-hmm. it. Um, so he should push on. And he's a gem of a guy. He's he's yeah. brilliant. He's super sound. I've yeah. known him for for a you know it's like everyone in Scotland kind of knows each other and yeah, stuff. That's and right, yeah. Robert's been nothing but supportive yeah. Yeah. to us and and whatever. And, and it goes right back to him. You know we yeah, got on yeah. really well. Yeah. He's a great guy. He was messaging me this morning because I put a wee thing in my story saying we've got a special guest coming in the day. Right. I was saying you know you some could say he's at the top of the techno scene in Scotland. You know guess who it is? So I'm getting all the messages. People coming in. I say it can't be Gary Beck. No, it's no Gary Beck. And Robert. Like that. It's a Gary Beck. I just sent him a video going, Yeah, you'll see after this next advert, you know what I mean? And he's like, No, mate, please tell me. So, that, no, that's uh, that's great. And All right, ag- that's cool, man. And that's again, cool. it's good though because uh, there are guys that are risking mm. potentially just wanting to give it up or whatever because Aye. it's like you can just be weathered by the storm. Aye. And it's like, Why is this not happening? And then you're questioning yourself. And it's like, Look, man, just keep doing it for doing it. Aye. And, you know. Hopefully it'll... Yeah, I mean, as, as we say, and amongst this whole social media thing, I think a lot of people are just becoming utterly confused mm-hmm. with where they're at at the moment in mm-hmm. life. You know, it's it's, got, it's messing with their head a little bit and yeah, musically yeah. maybe not hearing back or only getting, as I say, like two likes or something. Like, oh God, I'm going to give up and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But mm-hmm. put her, just put her out of one side, man, and focus on what you're... What you're like, what you're really loving, you know. Mm-hmm. Just, just, work, just, just don't compare man. yourself. That's the hard don't thing. Don't compare yourself. Stop, don't look. Don't look at. I mean, it, it annoys me. I've got Instagram, and it's just the back of the head shots with the crowd. I'm just, oh, <laughs> is this man, you know. <laughs> It's not special. It doesn't feel special anymore. Mm. Like, see if I, if I if you post a picture of a gig now with the crowd in the back of your head, it's just as good now as like posting a picture of a field. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 it's something. It's something that should be. I mean, it's a lot for you mm-hmm. and, and what you're doing, but people are just seeing that constantly and it mm-hmm. used to be something a lot more yeah. you like, look at that, I, how that's popping you know, off now it's just another video I, I mean the video's got to be great now you know it's got to be like a sea of people mm-hmm. for someone to go oh, for it to be validated oh, yeah. aye well yeah. but if it's just a kind of humble club gig with a back of headshot it's like seen it seen it just like your dinner <laughs> out with the ice just like your food <laughs> <laughs> I know. I see it at gigs a lot. I see DJs are like that. They're, they're, right, they're turning around. They're, right, ready? Five, four, three, two. <laughs> <laughs> the drop's coming. <laughs> and there it is. You know, they got the shot and it's like, they forget to mix in the next record. They're yeah. just too busy. Well, oh, that's a good one. I'll put a different blooming font mm-hmm. in it. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's wise, it's, it's wise words, and especially like in today's society, there's nothing more powerful than hearing that. It's like there's so much comparisons, yeah. you know, yeah. people really need to find them, their own voice yeah. through the music or through whatever. Exactly. Art, whatever art, you know. It's the hardest exactly. thing to do, exactly. though, when you're being influenced by so many people, or if you're constantly yeah. looking, it's like, Aye. oh man, I'm not doing the right it thing. Is a, it is a rock and a hard place, man. Totally. It's, it's like you still have to do it. Mm-hmm. and it would be lovely if you didn't have to mm-hmm. do it the pressure that everyone's on to mm-hmm. to post it's like oh it's Monday and I haven't posted anything yet yeah. no one will know that I'm here on this planet anymore yeah yeah. It's like these calm kind of, down it's like just, just calm down I know man. calm down days will pass by and then you'll post something again and it's like that post will probably do better because <laughs> yes, you're not in the I, face I, all I, the time exactly you know Ach, it's just a I don't know. I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of it all, but I do understand there's so many benefits to it as mm-hmm. well for people as well, and, and and there's so many negative aspects to it for sure. Mm-hmm. And for for any artists or up and coming artists, look, we've been discussing this a bit as well. It's like the act of creating is the thing that will bring influence, not mm-hmm. coming up with a post. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, aye. The, the, creating the art aye, will give you the fans. Absolutely. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if you focus on that, the good music you know, will still shine yeah, through. Yeah. Though it will. It will still shine through if your music's top notch it'll shine through I people mean, pick up on it. it it is so true though because a tune can change a person's life uh-huh. you know and it's that moment like that was the tune that made me want to get in there or that was Aye. the tune that oh I broke up with my bird and Aye. you know that was the tune that brought me back to yeah. life or, you know it could be anything and, and that that's a crazy thing isn't it it's Absolutely. like but if you're not putting that out there then nobody's ever going to hear it and nobody's ever going to know of course I of see, course. One, see one probably towards tying it up here but I think um one thing I'm seeing a lot, a lot more DJs are getting out there uh-huh. than yeah. actual producers. So uh-huh. there's a load of people right now that are actually starting to really hit big kind of time and they're not releasing music. Which mm. is a good thing. Ultimately, it's down to a good DJ mm-hmm. making a club dance, you know, and I think that's a brilliant thing. Um, 
a lot of the DJs are, are definitely getting more of a chance now, it seems. Mm -hmm. Obviously, again, with a big push of social media, it's, it's helping yeah. the DJs too. Massive. Yeah. So there's, a, there's certainly a point there where that wasn't happening. No. You, know, you, had, was like you, you had, had to, to produce, you make have to tunes produce, to aye. stamp your mark. Yeah. You know, that's it. And it's that's kind of coming back that. around though, that's isn't true, it? Yeah. It is. Aye. And I, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. I think if you're a... See, the amount of times I'll be doing gigs in the, in the warm-up DJ is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And no one's ever heard of them. Mm. And, you know, so I'll take a wee minute and just stand and applaud mm -hmm. and I'll be like, mm -hmm. they were brilliant, mm -hmm. you know? And, and it's good to see DJs getting a, a crack at the whip a bit more now, you know? Yeah, because it, it, essentially it's, it's a really different kind of art form, isn't it, DJing? It's yeah. like, they're, they're similar, but yeah. they're totally different things. Oh, like, yeah. You know, oh, I mean, I've had warm-up DJs who are up at 140 BPM, smashing it and looking at me like that. <laughs> Yes, and I'm like that. No, no, no. no. Fuck it, no. <laughs> How am I meant to go on after this? Uh, that's um, crazy, isn't it? Aye, but then you've just got some some perfect perfect DJs who who just uh, lay it lay it nicely yep. for you. Uh, they just understand. They know the club better than you. Mm -hmm. They're residents, you know. Yeah. So so they deserve some applause. <clears throat> yeah. They're big champions of the warm up set. You know, we, we that, talk about yeah. that as well. It's a good thing to do. I, I, I've done a few all night sets, like about nine hours and stuff. And I thought initially, oh, geez, I'm scared of this. Loved it, and it tested me mm -hmm. as a DJ. It really, it really pushed me, and I was like, right, this is this is great. I'm really mm -hmm. enjoying this, and I, I, I like that. There's a real skill to to do in each set, each section of the night. Yeah, I think for sure, yeah. it's very important for nights to have that progression. I think rather yeah. than just the same relentless every hour yeah know? yeah you know that so. going going more trippy going more trying to say back to the house aye, you know aye. and going through the whole thing but the know? thing is in scotland you can't really do that can you mm, you've I only know. got four hours and plus three and a half. i know plus <laughs> they want it pure smashing hard in scotland do you know what i mean well that's the thing i mean i, I like my music harder you know mm -hmm. so i love it like i've been doing the sub club every year for the last like six seven years and it's it's been full it's been massive it's so nice to see and I, you just, just slam right in, man, and I just <laughs> they love, love it. it. I absolutely love it. Same up in the read, the reading rooms. What a great club, which is sadly eh, another one that's gone. What a club that was, you know. But again, poof, just mm -hmm. get in there, you know. Love yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> amazing. So I, is there any last things you want to promo before we before we wrap up? Is there anything? Not really. The, the tens wise people can come to. Uh, come well, see you? actually, on Friday, Friday I'm doing yeah. SWG three with Alan Fitzpatrick and Harvey and Ryan. That's a big one. <laughs> Aye, aye, oh, it's always man. good to play with a big man. Um, we're going to try and get along to that, man. Mm. Aye, let us know if you want to go. Um, and I'm not always looking at the guest list spots, by the way. <laughs> just, uh, well, just, we did just give him an interview, <laughs> so hopefully. Because the camera's live, you know. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> after he's like, don't ever ask me for guest <laughs> And then I think on, when I'm on Saturday, I'm in, I think I'm in Belgium on Saturday. So Nice. Amazing. So we're doing that. And then uh, the 10-year compilation of Beck Audio is out, ju out just now. So Exciting. Check it. Exciting, Excellent, man. man. Amazing. Great cool. to talk to you. Aye, an absolute pleasure. It's great Thanks to get a wee insight into your, into your world, how you do things, you know, and I'm sure uh, it'll go down a, a treat with, with the, the watchers and hopefully, listeners. And hopefully. Mm -hmm. Aye. So it's been a pleasure. Yeah, Thanks yeah. very much. Thanks so much, Gary. So Cheers. episode thirty two. Thirty two. <laughs> wrapped up, done and dusted. See you guys again soon. This has been Gary Beck. Thanks so much, mate. Cheers. Cheers.